Your materials look flat, too clean, too fake, but the fix might be hidden in just one shader, the principal BSDF, and I'm going to show you how to use it properly. Let's get right into it. So where did this magic shader even come from? It's not just some random Blender node, it actually comes from Disney Animation Studios. Back in 2012, Disney released their principal shading model, a unified system for creating all kinds of materials, from metal and glass to skin and fabric. It was first used in the movie Wreck-It Ralph. Blender adopted it in version 2.79, bringing us in line with PBR workflows used in Substance, Unreal, Unity and even feature films. Before that, creating materials meant combining 5 or 6 nodes manually. Now it's all packed into one physically accurate shader, the principal BSDF. The base color. It defines the surface color. Simple. But it doesn't do anything alone. The material characteristics come from other settings. First, we have metallic. Metal or non-metal? That's all these value answers. 0 for non-metals and 1 for metallic objects. Any value in between just gives it a little bit of shine which can be done with the roughness value as well. Roughness defines how sharp or blurry your reflections are. Lower roughness reflects everything perfectly and a higher roughness will diffuse the reflection more. So go for a high value for non-shiny objects, something around 0.5 for matte finish and lower for glossy finish. Next we have the index of refraction which won't do anything in this case but it will come in handy when we use the transmission feature. We'll get to it in a bit. Then we have alpha which basically controls how opaque your material is. Leave it at 1 unless you are aiming for any stylized effects. Next we have the normal. So let me add a noise texture and a bump node so that we can visualize it. Connect the factor of the noise texture into the height of a bump node and plug it into the normal of the principal BSDF. Normal maps give depth to a material. By changing the normal scale, detail, you can get different types of surface details on materials. I've used a noise texture for demonstration, but you can also use normal maps available online. Next up is subsurface scattering. This simulates how light interacts with translucent objects like wax, skin or leaves. You can increase the weight to increase the subsurface scattering, or if the effect is not prominent, you can also increase the radius. You can see how this makes the light interact physically accurately inside translucent objects. And 90% of the times, this is the secret to making organic materials from plastic to feeling alive. Then we have the specular, which has an IOR level that you can increase or decrease to adjust the specular highlights on your model. Then we have anisotropy, which simulates how light interacts with metals. You can increase the anisotropy value and also the rotation if you want to create some unique effects. You can see how increasing the anisotropy changes the reflections on the model. Then we have transmission, so let's turn down the metallic. If you increase the transmission weight, the material basically allows light to pass through it. You can control the amount of light by changing the roughness and also the transmission weight. This is the first step while making any transparent material. Next, clear coat or coat. It adds a second shiny layer on top. Great for glossy car paint, varnished wood or plastic with a lack of finish. You can adjust the weight and the roughness of this coat to control the highlights on your model. It is very helpful to add that extra level of polish that completes your material. Then we have Sheen. It adds a soft, cloth-like glow to the edges of curved surfaces, mimicking the fuzzy reflections of fabrics. It gives soft, velvety edge highlights, perfect for fabrics like cotton, felt or velvet. Next up, we have Thin Film, which simulates the iridescent rainbow effect you see in soap bubbles, oil slicks or lenses caused by light interference. I made a very simple material with low roughness and full transmission. In Thin Film, you can find settings like thickness in nanometers and the index of refraction of the material you want to simulate. You can look up the values online for the thickness values and IOR values of different materials. You can also animate the thickness and IOR to create some interesting interference patterns on the surface. It can be used to simulate light interference on transparent bubbles, CDs, films and other transparent surfaces. Now let's make some basic materials and learn the full power of this principal VHDF shader. First up, plastic. Most people make it way too glossy or way too perfect. If you just slap on base color and some roughness, you will not have a realistic looking plastic material. Real plastic has tiny imperfections, surface details and is rarely a pure mirror. So I added a noise texture, plugged it in to the roughness. If you don't have it enabled, go to edit, preferences and enable the node wrangler add-on. Trust me, it makes work so much easier. 
you can control shift and click on any specific node to visualize just that node. I plugged a color ramp after the noise texture to control the noise. You can tweak the scale, detail, roughness etc according to the finish of the surface that you want. Control shift click on the color ramp to visualize it better. Moving the black slider makes it more glossy and the white one makes it less so. You can also download some free surface imperfection maps and plug it in to the roughness. You can use the color ramp to control this as well. You will find many free surface imperfection textures online. You can use them to get some realistic details on your models. Select the texture and press Ctrl T to add a mapping node and then you can even change the scale of this texture. Now we are starting to get somewhere. You can see some nice surface detail on the plastic. Then we'll need to add some normal details. Because perfectly smooth surfaces don't exist. So add another noise texture. Plug the factor into the height of a bump node and connect it to the normal. Ctrl Shift click on the bump node to visualize it. You can change the scale, detail, roughness, lacunarity and other values depending on the type of surface finish that you want. Tweak the settings until you are happy with how it looks. If the normal is too strong you can also reduce the strength of the bump node. You can add a touch of clear coat for the glossy look on polished plastic but don't overdo it. I played with the settings until I had something that looked good and after some final tweaks now you can see the difference between a basic plastic shader and an upgraded plastic shader. Let's look at metallic materials next. Metals can look super fake if it's too shiny or there are no surface details. Let's set the base color and work on the surface bump detail first. Add a noise texture and plug in the factor to the height of the bump and plug it in into the normal of the principal BSDF. You can see we already have some dents and details on the surface. You can adjust the scale, the strength of the bump node, detail, roughness, lacunarity, distortion, etc. If you increase the detail, you can get a gold foil type of material. By reducing the detail a bit and also reducing the scale, you can get a hammered or dented metal kind of look. Experiment with the normal details until you are happy. We can make different types of materials like this dented or hammered metal look or you can press Ctrl T to add a mapping node to the noise texture and then increase the scale of the texture on X or Y axis to get a brushed metal look. You can reduce the scale of the bump until you have some nice surface detail. You can also increase the scale on the X or Y axis depending on the axis that you want the metal to be brushed on. Next let's add some roughness variation. Add a noise texture, plug it into the roughness and add a color ramp to control the effect. You can press Ctrl Shift and click on the color ramp to visualize it separately. Adjust the scale, detail, roughness of the noise texture according to the look of the metal that you want. Adjust the black and white sliders of the color ramp to make it more shiny or less. Using these nodes and tweaking the settings, we can transform a boring looking metal material into some realistic looking metals. Finally, let's look at a glass shader. I made a simple material, base color was white, transmission was full. Now by adjusting the roughness, you can create a very basic frosted glass material. Also let's change the index of refraction to a value realistic to glass, something around 1.45. Using the techniques we learned in the previous two materials, I added a simple noise texture with a bump node to add some normal detail. Just some surface distortion. Next I used a free smudges surface imperfection map, dragged it into blender and plugged it in to the roughness. Using stains or smudges surface imperfections can give a lot of realism to your glass materials. You can also add a mapping node to the smudges texture to scale it. And that's how you can transform this boring glass material into a realistic looking glass surface. These are just the basics of how to create materials with the principal BSDF shader. There's a lot more we can do, like adding ambient occlusion, edge wear, scratches, etc. Which I'll definitely be covering in a future video. So stay tuned and let me know what you'd like to see next. Subscribe for more videos every week.